Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. So we're in episode two of the Falcon FX monthly show. I really appreciate all the comments from the last one. I know you guys and girls took a lot of value from it, all the things that we went in there. If you're joining the channel for the first time, go and check it out, watch episode one as you follow along this journey. So in episode two, we're keen to just give you some insights what's happened in the month. I mean, all in all, it's been a great month. It really has opportunities, the market, the structure, very, very clear. And there's so much more moving forward. Q3 for us is huge because we're launching quite a few things. We actually just launched something called the Falcon FX Trading Center. If you're a Falcon FX student, then you'll be using it. And if you haven't, you've just joined us, then you need to be using this resource. Guys and girls, this is one of the most powerful resources that we've ever created. This is going to be your second brain. This helps you learn faster, more efficiently, quicker, just Everything about it is going to help the process become more efficient and the way that you can replicate. It's essentially your second brain. And again, we may even do a video on this or a similar resource, something for you guys and girls on the channel for free that we can create to help get you on that level as well because we're very, very passionate about everything that we do. But this one we've been working on for months and the impact that, I'm just excited to see the impact that this does over, not just now in the immediate future, but more so two, three months, four months, five months down the line when you can see people just leveling up because of this, that's gonna be exciting for us. So looking forward to that. Uh, we have a few other things that we're going to be launching next week, again in Q3, all part of the plan. So everything's going smoothly. We've got a lot of things and we're really excited to roll these out. But in terms of the market, so I'd be keen to know how you guys and girls have got on this month. You know, a lot of you coming here that you, you'll be trading different strategies. Let us know in the comments what kind of trades that you got involved with. How was your month overall? How did you find the markets in general? I mean, we saw the DXY sell off. Very, very nice momentum there. This has been something we've been forecasting for a while, this bigger move from the dollar moving to the downside. And it's at a key point now where you can see that we've broken the previous low and we're really just looking at what happens next. Remember, it's not just that success leaves clues, price action leaves clues, the market leaves clues. So are you taking permission from the market or are you just jumping in? Well, there's gonna be a few things we go into in the show today, just giving you insights as to the main, main pairs that you wanna keep a lookout for August. It's gonna be unreal. There's a few key positions, especially on the Kiwi pairs, so keep, keep your eye out for that. And we're gonna be going over a couple of things in terms of mindset, a book that I wanna recommend that I've been reading for years and years and years and I've recently revisited it and I think there's a, a really, really key thing in the chapter so I'm gonna be keen to go into that. But all in all, we're gonna start off with one of our key trades of the month because it was just such a beautiful setup, very clear, very concise and something we can replicate. So let's get into that now. Right guys, so welcome. So we are now taking a look at trade of the month. So essentially, remember trade of the month isn't always about the biggest return. It's not about that. It's about the consistency of the return that you get within the individual trade. I mean, the individual skill of placing a position, anyone can place a position and the market moves up or moves down and you can bank 10%, 15%. But it's, is it replicatable? That's the key thing that we're after here. We always wanna look for something. So my idea of trade of the month is something that you see over and over again that you can consistently hit, something you can see that's tested, you see it over and over again and you can always execute on that because that's what gives you the confidence. So as you can see, I've got the NAS 100 USD. I know not all of you coming to the channel will be trading that. A lot of you would just focus on currency and that's absolutely fine. But what we've got here is three others as well. So this is gonna be in the top three when we get into them, but firstly the NAS 100 USD. So we've been looking at the NAS for a while and ever since that we broke out from Let's just take a look here. Ever since we broke out from this area here, we was looking at this kind of double top region just to see if the market gives us permission to either break back into the structure or we just keep trickling higher. Now, the one thing and a key lesson you can learn from here is that when you look at indices as a whole, all you really need to do is go to the weekly chart, grab anyone, grab you know, S&P more so as well, US 30, all of these things, and you can see they just really just trickle higher, trickle higher, trickle higher, trickle higher, and even when they sell off, they trickle higher, they sell off, they just climb, they just keep climbing. So I won't be surprised if they do the same thing. 
but it doesn't mean to say that you still can't capitalize on the drops because when they drop, they drop more, a lot more aggressively, as you can see here, as you can see here. So we're essentially expecting a bit of a drop and whether it moves higher or not, it, we really don't care. We don't really need to know. It's more so having that pullback play. So you can see why we were looking at it there, especially on the weekly, but we kept climbing and what we did see was just an extended channel. So we see this kind of pattern play out consistently time and time again. And this was really an extension of what's happening here. So when you see channels like this, just consistently will sell off and we're looking for these areas as a minimum. So looking for the same thing on this, but knowing full well that it doesn't really have to go all the way to the downside, how much can we take from it? So I'm gonna remove the ray. As you know, that was the thought process, catching trades on the wrong side before the drop. What was really great within this structure was a particular pattern that happens a lot, right? So if you cast your eyes to this type of structure here, this is really, really good. When you see the market aggressively approach these areas, you don't want to just sell straight into that because there's no permission. And I've been mentioning this at the beginning of this kind of show. It's about permission from the market. So we had typical double top. A lot of you will be familiar with the double top. And then we have this particular structure that we were looking for the sell. Now entry and execution, that's really depending on your strategy. But this one was a no brainer for us looking for this on the one hour chart. And the one thing I want to, to showcase and cast your eyes to is that if you're a trader right now and you're looking for, let's say, a particular trade, however you're trading, it's all about stacking confluence. So a lot of traders where they get hold back is they want perfection. So what they'll do is they'll say, right, this has got that tick, this has got that tick, 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 five things, and then one thing wrong. It's like, hmm, I'm not too sure, that's putting me off. Yeah, but overwhelming, the majority, is that you've got a lot of things within your favor. And this is what I wanna cast your mind to in this show is that how many of you are doing this right now where you're looking at great trades, but for some reason, one thing just puts you off. It's because you're striving towards perfection, but there's no such thing. It's an imperfect market. So how can you expect perfection in something that is already imperfect? So just something to think about because that could be holding you back as well. So a bit of a powerful tip, but essentially after we got that commitment to the upside, completely retraced, typical structure that we look for and the sell, this was a no brainer executed as a type of entry that we there's two type of entries that we'll take on this i took the one that's very popular that a lot of us like to take with these type of positions and this one ended in it's just under five percent a really really decent trade you know in terms of the the recap we won't get into the entry and management but just the overall trade of the month is based off of this this and my my tip for you guys because you can go and do this and apply it to your own strategy and see if this helps you this pattern alone what's happening here and the obvious clues as to the structure. When this happens, this type of structure is so consistent, it's unreal when you have this type of formation because there's a lot of psychology happening here of people getting caught on the wrong side and the psychological pattern that happens here, which is unique to Falcon. And when we see this, we execute. There's certain types of thing in the market that you don't hesitate. You know, There's certain things where you have to analyze, you have to figure out what's going on, see if it's something to fit your plan. And there's certain ones where when they happen, you don't think you execute because they're very, very consistent. Never 100%, but close enough. So it's just about understanding what that is, your go-to is in that sense. So for this one, really happy with that one. It really wouldn't matter if this was a 2% trade, 3% trade, 9% trade. This one was under five, which is really, really tidy. It's more so the, the fact that you can replicate this type of formation over and over again. It had so many things going for it, even though you could call it ambitious in the sense that we're quite far away from this high now, which is absolutely fine. Ideally, what we're looking for is something just piercing the high and just piercing the low. Catching traders on the wrong side before it moves up, trade, catching traders on the wrong side here before we move down. So looking for a similar thing. So this one was slightly more ambitious in that sense, but what really done it for me was the pattern. So you can go and back test that, take a look at these type of structures and, and see what you think. Again, you can still take advantage, even if a move is moving to the upside, the pullback could still be 15%. You know, so it's about understanding that with any strategy, you want to be able to capitalize short term, medium and longer term. And that's a great thing about the Falcon style is that you have the ability to do that. So very, very happy with that. But that is trade of the month for us. There was many other positions on some yen pairs as well that a lot of people took. Aussie yen, CAD yen, Kiwi yen. There was some really, really great trades. So I hope you took some value from that. I hope you enjoyed that, guys and girls. So that was just under 5% for NAS 100 USD. Now let's take a look at a few pairs that I think that will be very, very beneficial for you guys to be keeping your eyes on 
for August. So let's take a look at that now. So now into the top three. So these are three things that I think that however you're trading, you should be looking out for. Last month I spoke about pound dollar moving to the upside and, and we'll, we'll dig into that. And it's definitely got a lot of opportunity as well, but it's all about adapting to the market when it's there. So two Kiwi pairs. So we've got Kiwi Yen firstly. This is one of the trades that a lot of our community capitalize on and still capitalizing on it. We're actually focusing on this for a sell. And the pattern that I showed you on the NAS 100 USD for the trade of the month, I want to cast your eyes to why this is important and how we can utilize price action for the same thing. So you may learn something from there. A lot of you have been curious about Falcon. You send us a lot of questions all the time. Why do we look at patterns the way that we do? Remember, we're not looking at an ascending channel and thinking, right, just because it's an ascending channel that we want to sell it. There's so much work that goes into all of this that you need to learn, but you'll only learn once you're, you're taking the modules because each one builds on each other and that takes time. There's processes in place. So again, what meets the eye when you look from the outside is it's not what you get when you're on the inside. It goes much more in depth than that. It may look simple, but you still have to apply a lot of work to understand the variations. So as you can see, when we're looking at patterns, so let's say, for example, we're looking at something like this, and this may help you with your own strategy. If, you're, if you want to find an edge in the market, you want to find something, like I said, your go-tos. Now, within your trading plan, not every single one of your trades is going to be spot on. It's not always going to be perfect, picture perfect, but there are going to be ones that when you see it, you execute on it. So let's take a look at Kiwi Yen here. So if we look at the similar type of price action, by the way, this, this tool, for some of you that may be asking, this is called a bars pattern. So you can favorite it, you can use it in your own strategy. It's a very, very helpful tool. So what can we see and learn from price action when we're looking at what we're looking at here? How do we get an edge? Well, take a look at this structure. So what's happening here? What is similar to the previous bit of price? We get a big amount of momentum in price action to the upside. Big amount, big amount of momentum. We get a push down and we get a corrective structure, we get a push down, we get a corrective structure, and what starts to happen to the corrective structure? It makes its way back up to the previous high. What happens? It makes its way back up to the previous high, and then it breaks, it completely breaks the low, and it breaks to the downside. This is actually something called an M style pattern. But this is something that, from my own findings, that I created. And again, this is from years and years of testing, observations. This is not your common pattern. This is not your you know, head and shoulders that you see in the market all the time or the inverse, right? This is more so something that it's not very, very common, but when it happens, you take full advantage of it. So people have already been on the sell from the top and will be looking to take this to the downside that potentially will break the low and go further. So it's about understanding, can you see now how we utilize price? It's never gonna be candle by candle, but I mean, you can see it's just very, very obvious. It's the same structure, move down, same structure, move down, same structure, tag the high, and then we move to the downside. Minimum is our target for the low, and it can go a lot lower as well. But again, that's the minimum area. Apologies, guys. So that would be the minimum area that we'll be looking for in that respect. But that is how we're looking at the price action and making sure that we can utilize that for an edge in our favor, because that's gonna help us out the most at the end of the day. So by knowing that, this is about knowledge. Knowledge is, is not power alone. It's the application of knowledge. So what have we gone and done? We can then go back and say, right, so, with that bit of knowledge and behavior, it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed, but you can see when something is unique and not very common, that is when you apply that because you know that it happens rarely, but when it does, it's probably more accurate than not. So looking at that, very, very nice structure. We're seeing this on a few other yen pairs as well, Aussie yen, similar type thing. So for those of you that are looking for some of these yen pairs, we'll be looking for this and potentially a lot lower. So let's see how that develops. So that is Kiwi yen and the quick lesson on that. Kiwi CAD is another one to look out for. So if we look at this on the weekly very briefly, so essentially we've got the huge, huge channel that we're looking at right now and we're trapped within this channel for a while. Longer term, breakout to the upside. What we're looking at now is that does Kiwi CAD have the potential for this impulsive wave lower? And I think it does based off of the structure, the way that the weekly is shaping up, the way that the daily is shaping up. You can just see one thing you have to take into consideration for those you just kind of jumping on the channel for the first time, what we look at is the nature. We look at the, the nature of price. Remember, not every currency pair is the same as another. Otherwise, you know, they would all behave the same. It's, they all have their own characteristics. You don't need to know every tiny little detail, but I mean, just an observation, you can see it's quite wicky, quite spiky. It's quite choppy on the way up. It doesn't really climb with impulse correction, impulse 
it's not really fluid in that sense. It's not unusual for price to just chop higher, chop higher, chop higher, and then just sells off and drops aggressively. So with KiwiCAD, we're looking for this impulsive wave to the downside. Whether this goes all the way to the low or not, we really don't care. It's about understanding this is what the structure is telling us, and we're looking for downside. Can we pop up one more time? Yes, potentially break out of these highs and then break back down into the pattern and then there'll be a particular pattern that will form that would indicate that we are looking for more downside. But in these areas, we are looking for selling opportunities. So if you're trading KiwiCAD, I would highly recommend that you don't cut your trades short. You know, you may be trading some sort of uh, support resistance, for example. You might be taking a trade in these areas and be looking for let's say you might be playing a range, right? You might be selling similar to us and then closing here and realizing it's got a lot more potential. And sometimes that can be the very thing that's holding you back, but just a very, on a small, small level. It's not that it can't work, but just understand what's happening. There's a big wave on the card. So let's see how that plays out. So another Kiwi pedal looks fantastic. And last but not least, pound dollar. So I spoke about pound dollar in the last show and for a very good reason. I mean, if you look here, on pound dollar remember what's happened here we broke that low and we caught people on the wrong side of the market as we expect so we tagged the low moved to the upside high time frame is pointing higher so we were looking for those buys and I, I spoke about looking for those buys the only thing that we didn't get is price didn't move all the way and this is what I want to teach you which is going to help price didn't move all the way to the low that we was looking for so it got close but not to the low to move to the upside so the market evolves, and this is why you have to be ready to adapt. Now, we're seeing it essentially like this. This potentially is giving us a lovely pullback play in which that we can sell off from here, which we are looking for at the moment, actually. Or these are all different sections, and utilize that tool that, that I spoke to you about. We can see this tool here. You can see we have a move up, we have a corrective structure. We have a move up, we have a corrective structure. We have a move up. So if we get another corrective structure and a pullback play, we can be still climb. We can still keep climbing higher in line with the high time structure, a minimum to these highs here and potentially beyond to that previous high. So what can we learn from that? Well, as you can see there, even if we do pull back, what would be happening here? We'd still be selling off. So we can still take advantage of the sell, even if it is to move higher longer term. So it's about being fluid and understanding where you need to adapt. How can you utilize the price action to help you be able to forecast for the future. So pound dollar looking really, really solid, but for us and for the rest of the trading space, ideally what you're looking for is looking at what's happening next, whether this is a short term sell and longer term buy, we will assess that as it happens. But as of right now, we're only looking for sales. If anything changes, again, the market will give us a clue there and it will pop higher and we'll take advantage either way. I think that's really the key thing that you wanna make sure that you have within your strategy and a message that I wanted to, to share with you all guys. Make sure that the strategy that you have is helping you be able to pivot and not get too fixated on, oh, well, this has to go down, this has to be a sell, or I'm only looking for sales. It's about knowing, yes, you're biased in a sense, because we all have some level of bias. You know, you might think that you have no bias, but again, you're, you're deceiving yourself. You will naturally have a, a majority in your mind of where you think that's more likely to go. But it's all about understanding, this is more likely, but if, if X happens, how am I going to capitalize on that moving forward? And that's really the thought process. So for us, NAS100 was solid. And again, these two Kiwi pairs, especially New Zealand CAD, I think it's got tons of opportunity to the downside. New Zealand Yen more specifically, because we've got that unique pattern that, we've, that we're looking at in the highlighted DM style pattern. And for pound dollar and the pound pairs across the board, we do have a lot of opportunity, but we're looking for the pullback play. We'll see how that develops. If it doesn't give us a sell, then no trade. We'll wait for something else and then capitalize on the, the buy to the upside. But by no means is this ready for a buy just yet. But I hope you learned something from that, guys and girls. And what I want to get into now is a chapter of a book that I've recommended for years. It's a book that I read so many years ago, and it was really part of my personal development growth many, many years back. And I think this can apply to trading that would really give you a really solid perspective moving forward. So let's get into that now. Right guys, so now to the chapter. So Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. If you haven't read it already, I highly recommend that you do. Game changer for you, you'll take so much value. This is one of my original copies. It's absolutely torn to bits, but the value that I've taken from this book and applied into my life has been huge. Remember, it's not about the books that you read or how many, it's about how you apply the books that you read. You can literally read this in an afternoon. Very, very inexpensive. I mean, we're talking eight pounds. Go and get it done. 
Um, but in terms of what is going to benefit you from a chapter perspective, this is chapter 19, page 97. Go and check this one out. So this is about creating large chunks of time. Now, I want to read a little bit of a passage for you that I think that will help you out massively. So think of it like this. Nothing can add more power to your life than concentrating all of your energies on a limited set of targets. So what does that mean? Well, the strategy of creating large chunks of time requires a commitment from you to work on scheduled times on large tasks. Most of really important work that you do requires large chunks of unbroken time to complete. Your ability to create and carve out these blocks of high value, highly productive time is central to your ability to make significant contribution to your work and your life and success in general. So why is this important? Well, think of it like this. Imagine your day, you just literally coast by and you decide, right, I wanna back test your dollar. I wanna work on my trading plan. And this is more trading specific or you want to test your strategy, or you want to build something else or on your advanced self review, you want to go over your mistakes and figure out what you want to tweak. You could have every intention to want to do it that day, but if you don't know what time you're going to do it, you'll just coast, coast by. Now, we, we've done this all in, in daily goals, this happens. If you've got five days, if you've got five daily goals and you've got 24 hours to achieve it, how long do you reckon it'll take you? Probably 24 hours. If you've got five daily goals and you've got 12 hours to achieve it, how long do you reckon it will take you? 12 hours. So we either coast by, but what I found is that you wanna make sure that your energy, right? Your energy is focusing on the most important tasks that are gonna push you towards your bigger goal. So you wanna time block it. This is what this is really referring to. So let's say for example, you wanna back test your dollar for an hour. Well, don't just say that for the day, actually pick a time. So let's say from nine in the morning to 10 a.m., that's when you're gonna be back testing. What are the chances that you're gonna be hyper-focused, laser-focused in that one hour? You've not got to think about anything, no distractions, nothing going on at all. All you need to do is say, right, I'm doing this from this period of time. The likelihood going in with that level of intention is that you extract much more meaningful data or whatever task you're doing in the hour of time. I can promise you this, you will feel so much more productive and you won't procrastinate because really this book is all about you know eliminating procrastination you, you you're not likely to do that because once you start building the habit of realizing how enjoyable that is to set a time it'd be like going to the gym right you wouldn't just decide on that day right i'm just going to go to the gym today you'd likely know a particular time that you're going whether that's four o'clock 7 a.m whatever time it is you know and then when you're there you know you're present with it but when we're learning to trade for whatever reason we ne we tend to get distracted we're on instagram we're on social media we're doing all these different things wondering why you're not moving towards getting better results it's because you're not laser focused so what i want to really beg the question to you guys and girls however you're trading whether you're just embarking on your forex journey First, read this book, because it's huge. You'll, you'll absolutely love this, and you'll enjoy it. Secondly, what could you be doing tomorrow, today, next week? Just forward thinking. What could you be doing, and what time are you going to do it? What goals are you now going to set with the intention of knowing what time of day you're going to do it? You might figure out, for example, and this is quite important as well, that's not really spoken about, you need to figure out where do you, where are you fully optimized? Where do you operate the best? Are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? There is no point in doing something that is the most important thing that you want to do for that day in the evening if you know you're the most productive in the morning, if you know that your energy is higher in the morning and that's where you perform the best. Well, if you just have a day to do some goals, then you might coast by, get distracted, and then find at 7 p.m., oh, I've got to do that really important task. Yes, you can still do it in a day and get it done, but how much more effective would it be if you was to do it in the time that you're most efficient? So that's what I want you to start thinking about, Pri prioritizing your day in terms of time frames. And if you can set that out for your day, just block it all off. Just say, right, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm doing this. From 11 till 12, I'm doing that. From one till three, I'm doing this part. And what you tend to find is that you will extract more out of it. You'll feel like you're getting more out of it as well, which is really, really important. And then you can start applying that not just to your trading, but your day-to-day -day life. You can apply it in your fitness. You can apply it in your mindset, even just reading, right? You might have every intention to read this day. It's 30 minutes for today. And then what happens? Have you ever been in a situation where, you know, it comes to 9 p.m., you realize, oh, I've not read today. And it becomes almost more of a chore rather than you saying, right, I'm going to read 30 minutes of Eat That Frog. Well, actually dedicate what time you're going to do that. 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., I'm gonna spend one hour and, and, and eat, read that frog, right? So it's just about prioritizing. These are such simple things. You might think, oh, well, that's obvious, that's clear. Well, why do so many people don't do it? Why do so many people don't achieve goals? Why is such a huge part of our population have never written down a goal in their entire life? 
So yes, this stuff may seem simple, but again, success leaves clues. And the majority of successful people, common denominator, they write their goals down, they time block, they prioritize these bits of time. So I hope you took some value from that, something for you to think about moving forward and how you're structuring your day. This is gonna be huge for you and I'd love to know how you get on. So now we're getting into mindset. Now this is something that I've been pondering on this thought a lot and thinking about all the areas of my life that I've managed to grow and improve over the years. And what does it really come down to? Well, overall, what I've always had in my mind is doing the basics really well. This is something I was taught from my mentors earlier on. And we were talking nine years ago now, teaching me the basics really, really well. And I think this is something that we need to think about in trading a lot. Now, we often hear the term trading is 90% psychology, 10% technicals, maybe even higher. We could even go 95, then 5% technicals, but let's keep it at 90-10 for now. We then have to ask ourselves the question, you know, how much of that 10% of technicals do you know? Do you have a basic understanding of the 10%? Or do you have an advanced understanding of the 10%? And then if you start to think about that in your life in general, how much do you know the basics? How well do you know the basics? Do you just have a basic understanding of the basics or do you have an advanced understanding of the basics? You can relate this to all areas of life. I mean, it would be like going into the gym, doing bench press, and then just having a basic understanding of it and then trying to move on to the advanced intricate little details, you end up hurting yourself. Why? Because you didn't build the core foundations on doing the basics really, really well and then moving on. We actually see this in trading a lot. They look at something that may seem basic and they just have a very, very basic understanding of it. They then move on to something intermediate, then advanced. And you kind of want to run before you can walk. You want to look at all these other areas and you haven't truly mastered the basics just yet. So the fact that we can apply this to day-to-day -day life and we can apply it into our trading, I encourage you moving forward as a thought that has really been in my mind for a lot of, how well do I know the basics in other areas of life? What is my understanding of that? And that really comes from this open-mindedness of being teachable, being coachable, being open-minded, not narrow, being open, having the ability to see things from a different perspective that, remember, you're a different person than what you was a year ago or six months ago or two years ago. So there's no shame or nothing wrong with going back at some basic principles and asking yourself, how well do I actually know this? How open-minded am I today? And that's a question you can ask yourself every single morning. How open-minded am I today? How well do I know the basics? And what we've found with successful people in general, and this can apply to all areas of life, is that they generally have a very, very high understanding of the basics. If you study Michael Jordan, what does he do? And what did he do? Doing the basics, the most basics of shots every single day, every single day, over and over again. Why? He can do all these kind of different things, but yet he appreciates that when you do the basics well, when you have a rock solid foundation of the basics and you continue to go back to refresh, you continue to go back to reaffirm, you'll notice that those are the people in life in general just go on to just have massive, massive success. So. One of the most important things I want you to take from this episode is not just the technicals, not just the book, not all the intricate little details, but more so ask yourself that question daily. How well do you know the basics? How can you apply that into your day-to-day -day life right now? And what areas could you improve on? Because I can promise you this, when you get confident at all areas of your life and you have a high understanding of those basics, then you can move on to the intermediate stuff. Then you can level up to the advanced level of thinking but it starts by doing the basic things well, really, really, really well. And once you do that, you can move on and then just keep improving, keep growing, keep moving forward. So something that I've been thinking about a lot and I wanted to share that tip with you all because I believe that you could all demand more from yourself if you just went backwards to go forwards. Remember, sometimes you have to take one step back to go 10 steps forwards. I'm a big believer in that. I've done it in my life through my experience. So I'm, I'm only sharing you insights from my own life experience. But what I've always found is that there's common traits with successful people. As we know, success leaves what? Clues. So we can see the clues. They've been playing out for years and years and years, and they all do the basic things really, really well. What area of your life today, tomorrow, next week, what area could you improve on? What could you do better? And what level of understanding do you have of the basics? I'll leave that for you to think about, guys and girls. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. So we're in episode two now of the Falcon FX show. We're gonna be adopting more things. We're gonna be bringing on some more things as well, moving forward, some guests. We've got some super interesting stuff coming soon, so stay tuned for that. But as the show just keeps evolving and evolving, 
you evolve with us. So I hope you took a lot of value, took a lot of notes. Thanks for tuning in as always. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. And of course it goes without saying, we really appreciate the love, the support, the engagement, you showing up every single week, always tuning in always showing up, always giving us your support and giving us your feedback. And we listen to that and we take that on board and we want this to be the hub that you come back to over and over again and you keep improving. Regardless of your trading our strategy or not, there's so many bits of value that you can absorb and apply to your day-to-day -day life. Wherever you are in the world, in the trading space, I hope you're absolutely smashing it and you're leveling up and you keep growing. Guys and girls, have an incredible weekend ahead and I'll see you in the next episode.